Welcome back to Through the Eyes of an Equestrian. Joining me for this episode is five-star event rider Hazel Towers, who's going to be telling us about her journey to the top of the sport with the help of the wonderful mare, Simply Clover. So yeah, I'm Hazel Towers. I am 34 and I am a five-star event rider from Harrogate. From the beginning then, where did your journey in eventing start and whereabouts on the timeline does Simply Clover fit in? So my eventing career definitely started when I was six years old and I had an amazing little uh, show pony that I started eventing on and uh, I went and walked Bramham every year because it was our local event and apparently when I was six years old and I was walking Bramham I said, Mummy, I want to do this on Spice, my little show pony. And she was like, you probably could have done some of the letter fences, to be fair, because she was a cracking little pony. So uh, that was sort of my, that was when it all started and when I decided that I really, really wanted to do Bramham one day. Clover entered into it. Um, I was very lucky to buy her when she was four and I was 18. And she was very much just a, a horse that I wanted to see where I could get with. I'd had a couple of previous horses. And so I loved her. My mum said she'll never do a good dressage test. You don't want to buy her. But I just fell in love with her. She's such a, such a nice person. So that's where she sort of started with me. Throughout those 10 seasons then that you've ridden Clover, you've taken her from pre-novice to badminton in Burley. What was the point along the way where you thought, actually, this mare is going to be the one that gives me my first ride at five star? I don't I don't think as a as a first time amateur who's never ridden a five star horse before, I don't think it ever crossed my mind until I got there. And in hindsight now, I mean, she could have done so many more five stars if I'd have known what I know now when I was 10 years ago. You know, I took it very steady. My mum said, oh, you need to do FEI competitions. And I said, look, I just want to get to advanced. And if I get to advanced, then I'll have a think about going to four star and things. And it wasn't really, it, I mean, I wanted to go to the top. I knew it was something I always wanted to do, but getting to Bremen was my sort of goal in life. And um, I only really knew I was going to get there when I did, my, I did my first two star at Belton and it went really well. And then I did my first three star and, it just, I just took it as it came and just sort of went with it and went with her. And I wouldn't say I pushed her too particularly quickly to move up the grades. It was all just very easy going and very much about having fun with her. Um, I think I knew when I jumped around Western Park advanced with her and she just made it feel like a novice. Um, and I, you can see when she's jumping over the big tracks and jumping around Bramham, it never felt like it was Bramham. Do you know, it just felt easy. For her so yeah and now I've obviously ridden around the biggest fence in the world and she didn't make them feel difficult um I realized quite how lucky I was to be sat on such an amazing jumper she's been such a reliable campaigner of yours season in season out and she's taken you to so many career highs but is there any particular moments that stand out to you I think doing my first Bramham in 2014 was one of my biggest highlights. I mean, it was something I was always wanted to do. Um, I'd got another horse at that point, Simply Smarty, who, I mean, she was also qualified for badminton and Burley, and she also jumped double clears around Bramham. And so it was only really when I got there and, and I'd done that, that I, um, I really felt like I'd kind of made it and I'd done all my things that I'd wanted to do with her. So, and I think at that point as well, because I was riding other horses and I was realizing that actually they didn't necessarily find it as easy as she did, that yeah, just kind of felt really good that I'd achieved my lifelong goal of doing Bremen. Looking at your eventing career, it's actually quite interesting because you did start out as an amateur owning your own horses. And then within the last five years have gone professional and now you have lovely owners and a yard up in Yorkshire. So who do, would you say has been the biggest support and how valuable has the support network been in facing challenges when going professional in eventing? Oh, there's been loads of people, trainers, friends, uh, non-horsey friends as well as horsey friends, my mum, who've all helped me along the way and along the journey. And there's been a lot of like internal battles as I think any event rider finds. Um, and I think when you first set out, you think it's all going to go perfectly. And then the older you get and the more blows you have, the more you just start to take them on the chin. I mean, Clover had a season off, I think, when she was about an eight or a nine year old, just after she'd done Blenheim. And at that point, like, I thought my world was over and it was the end of the world. And my darling Clover had done a, I think she just did a suspensory. And now, when a horse has an injury, it's just very much one of those things that you have to deal with. So 
it it teaches you a lot about the highs but also about the lows and just about taking things on the chin and about managing things and about not having too many expectations so you can't feel let down and being very pragmatic about being an event rider because there is an awful lot of good stuff about it but at the end of the day it's very very hard work and and there's a lot of a lot of hard bits to it as well so yeah Back to Clover then, and you've recently announced that you've retired her from the top of the sport and she is now in foal. How tough of a decision was that for you to make? It was a really hard decision to make for me and I am I'm heartbroken for her because she's missed two years at Badminton and Burley, really. I mean, and it, and it's the older horses, I think, that have suffered the most from this. You know, they're the ones who've sort of reached the end of their career and they're in their peak. And so for me, missing, I mean, missing Badminton 2020 when I had two horses going there was a real blow for me. Um, and then obviously this year, I really, really wanted to get to Burley. And that's as soon as that was sort of cancelled, I thought, you know what, she's 17. I'm going to have to I have to do it at some point and I, and I can't leave it too late. So it was a very difficult decision to make. And it wasn't really one I wanted to make yet because I felt like she's she's still got runs in her. But I don't want to be risking putting her to fold too late and having any complications because she's too nice a person. So it wasn't an easy decision to make, but it was inevitable. And I had to sort of bite the bullet, really, and, and get on with it. <laughs> Although Clover is going to be a big miss on your wagon at events, you do have some very exciting up and coming young horses at Team Towers. So tell us a bit about them. What's in store for the future? I've got some amazing horses actually. I've got um I've got Fuzzy Pal, I've got his little sister Crispy C, um, who's qualified and done loads and done really well as a six year old. And Fuzzy obviously did really well as a seven year old. Um He's missed Blenheim this autumn, unfortunately, which is a real shame for him. But I mean, he's still very young and he's got a lot of growing still to do. So I've also got another really, really nice horse called Cherie, who I was hoping to get to Bramham and maybe Burley next year. So I've got lots of lovely horses and I'm really lucky to ride them. Um, my focus is not to overdo the amount of horses I have in my yard. I would rather keep it to quality and not quantity and be able to ride them all myself and do them justice. Um, so I, I am quite selective about the ones I take on board and what I want to compete. Um, and yeah, I, for me now it's about, I feel like I've made my name for myself. I've established myself as a five-star rider and it's about being selective about what I ride and, and just keeping it as an enjoyable thing as well as being work because I see a lot of professionals out there who don't look like they're having a nice time. And for me, I mean, you've got to love what you do, haven't you? It's got to be pleasure. And for the horse's sake, as much as anything, they've got to know that you want to do it and you're enjoying yourself as well as they are and, and they're not being forced to do anything. So um, it's about building that relationship and that rapport with, with the horses I have in. And I really enjoy working with the younger horses and producing them up through the grades. So I know them myself and I know that it's been done properly. Looking back over the past decade then, you started out with one horse at pre-novice level. You went to badminton, you've been to Burley, and now you've got a yard full of exciting up-and-coming horses. What advice would you give to younger riders who are wanting to become a professional, but might not have the resources there initially and have to do the long route? Well, (laughs) as someone who didn't have any resources and had a mother who always said to me don't work with horses get a proper job and go and work in an office which I mean I put my I put my hours in in the offices I did I did nine years and it was only in 2016 that I actually went professional then I would say it's out there for you to get and to do and you can do it and do you know what so many people went to try clover and didn't want her and didn't like her and I got I got her as a sort of cast off really and I would say that you can do it with a lot of hard work and a lot of determination and you don't need a fancy lorry and a fancy arena and you don't need rich parents you can do it through hard work but you've got to be willing to a not make very much money because there's not very much money in eventing unfortunately and b just be willing to work really really hard every hour that god sends you've got to put your graft in and and then you'll hopefully reap the rewards like i have done